how to study and things like that or maybe I would tutor on YouTube like there are million Indian YouTubers who teach and they are awesome and I have learned from them as well so I think that that was what I wanted to do and my mother still advises me to pursue a teaching career on YouTube but I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to vlog. And I'm not just vlog. I think that my life is quite different and at times difficult, but all lives are at times difficult. And I just want to share the uniqueness of my life from others. And I would love to think that you know it can brighten your day a little bit and it it can make you relate to my life a little bit and not only will i share my life about just how my life's going of course education as i mentioned is a very important part of my life has always been an important part of my life till i was three three and a half um, it has always been important for me to do well in the education system and to get to know about the rents of the education system after the 12th and it's it's just horrifying to see that and I will share my struggles about that just I haven't graduated yet this is my final year of college and I think that it still continues to be that but it is a little less daunting than it was in the schooling system and I think that I would love to share those struggles also and my health struggles which I'll talk about later and it won't be it would be a huge video if I talk about my, my health struggles it I just can't do it in one video so I will just briefly mention it in this video and if you guys want to know more about my health struggles both physical and mental health struggles with life and everything I can make a video about it and I would love to share a video about it one day and hopefully soon and I yeah and I love books and you are now stacked on like seven books yeah i have not read all of them i have read like five of them and two of them i have not read completely at least so yeah i would love to share about books also and i love to share about my family also um which brings us to the next question which is question number three What's your family like? Okay, <laughs> I've been born in a joint family and um, there, are, there were 20 members, I believe. I have to count, I have to count because, yeah, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to be a part of a joint family that you don't know how many members are there in the joint family. It's a struggle. It's a constant struggle as there are, you know, additions to our family as well. So, um, anyways, I will not <laughs> blubber too much about my family. Um, I'm the only daughter of my beautiful and gorgeous parents. Um, I'll put a picture up of them for you um, if you would like. But I believe that they were a gorgeous young couple and I'm not nearly as gorgeous as them. But uh, yeah, they're, they still are gorgeous and handsome and beautiful in my eyes. So I will share them with you. I could, I would right now, but they're not home. So yeah, in, in the next video, if you guys would like. And also the rest of my family and um, 
I would, but I'm not with them right now. Yeah, I will explain that later also. I feel like this video is going to be like very, very long. Okay, the fourth question. Four. Um, education. As I mentioned, that education is really important for me. Um, what am I studying right now would be um, a bachelor's degree, bachelor's of science degree in honors with the subject microbiology. I think this subject has grown popularity over the years after the pandemic, especially it has become very, very uh, important field to be working on and to be researching on and I've always, always loved that about microbiology and I've always been fascinated about biology in general but that's not the reason I took microbiology is it? Yes, I am one of those people who have targeted their life to become a doctor and yeah, give the undoubtedly one of the toughest examinations in India, if not in the world, it is one of the toughest to qualify just because, not because of the toughness or of the questions, but because of the competition and how many students are applying each year for this examination that is named. And of course I did not, I qualified, but that's not the point. If, even if you qualify, you would not get a medical college to apply to and it's it's a rat race to the end of time and congratulations to everyone who got qualified in NEED this year or in the previous five, six, any year if you get qualified to NEED, congratulations and I hope you become a good doctor and help, you know, build up and better the quality of edu education, <laughs> the medical history of, what am I even saying? <laughs> if you got qualified in need this year or the, in the previous years, I hope that you become great doctors and, you know, help build up the medical system in India. And if you choose to go in foreign countries, then there. I just, yeah, I did not, and it it was the ghost of something telling me to become a doctor for a year, and I only wanted to become a doctor for a year, for a year, only a year, and not before that, not after that, I don't have any, any, any eagerness to become a doctor, and even if I did get a chance to become a doctor, I would have to drop out because of what happened like at the you know before the MTA of, of the second semester I believe so last year around May <laughs> I got really, really ill which brings us to our next question fifth question health yes this is a huge topic and it has always been a huge struggle in my life and it will always be a huge struggle in my life, uh, especially physical health. It will be a great, great struggle in my life. Um, so last year in May, I believe, I got like really, really sick with you know just pain and weakness in body and what not. And the main symptoms outside was that my skin was tightening in my face, in my hands, and um, my hand, yeah, my hand skin is still like darkened. Then my face skin, I think you can see, it's it's because of that as well. So I before that also I have. Um, gone to multiple dermatologists and they couldn't really diagnose me with something but um, then I decided that as I moved to Kolkata to study and from here and 
I was like, and you know, car just reopened, and then we moved. Well, by we, I mean I moved, and my parents helped me move um, into a PG, and I had a roommate, and it felt like life was changing all of a sudden. And after three months of staying in the PG, I was like, gosh, this is my health is like deteriorating like like nothing else I've ever experienced. I have been down with illnesses before as well, but it was nothing severe like this before. This kind of weakness I've never felt before. So it was kind of scary. So I put the research into the like one of the best dermatologists in Kolkata. And I went to her and she was like, whatever you are thinking that you are just having a skin disorder, it's not just a skin disorder. You need to do this blood tests and then we can confirm, but whatever symptoms you are having, it indicates to scleroderma or systemic sclerosis. So I went in with my father to this appointment, to this particular appointment, um, and I, I was like, mm, what does that mean? Even so, so she can't explain that it is an autoimmune disorder, and I need to get the blood tests done, and as soon as possible, I need to get back to her, and you know get checked up and everything else so of course you could see my father's face going like white and you know i don't blame him i would i kind of knew that you know not knew that it was some stress it, it is a very rare condition that occurs and happens in someone so I didn't know about that, but I knew about other autoimmune disorders and conditions like lupus and the most common one, if anyone would notice, it would be arthritis. But arthritis, I think it's the less, least, um, what is it called, life-threatening, if you will, um, and lupus and system experiences are like more life threatening and in diagnosed early um, as it was I was diagnosed when I was 20 so I think that that was really reassuring that I got diagnosed early so I skipped a lot of chapters in between these but of course we got the blood tests done which were really crazy expensive um, like yeah like doctors were like yes we know this but a, a rheumatologist a specialist in rheumatology is the doctor who would be the specialist for you know this autoimmune disorder which affects the connective tissues and um, so yeah of course we would go to a um, specialist a rheumatologist and we saw her and she also said that yeah, you have to come back and you have to get the blood test done to confirm and we cannot do anything else without it and it would just confirm that you have it and then we can start the medications. Basically, that's what they said. So we did the blood tests and of course I was ANA positive, I think that's what it's called. It's anti-nuclear antibody so it's it's scary to have that result back positive and you know just sit with that and research what it is and it being something really really scary and it, yeah it was some hard things and I was getting sicker like more sick the next day because I was not on any medications and yeah it was really really frightening those days I feel like more for my parents than it was for me maybe 
um, most definitely. Um, but you know, the more you learn about something, the less scared you are about something. So that brings me to say that also I want to bring awareness to rare, rare disorders and rare conditions and I've always been interested about awareness, about anything and everything and um, that's why I was aware about autoimmune disorders, not this one particularly, um, probably because it is rare, but even if it is rare, it does not mean that, you know, scientists can be like, yeah, just a few thousand people are like affected by this. So we don't need to put a research paper on this. Like you need to get your, <laughs> get your back up and do the research and make the medicines that needs to be made and to cure this because this does not have any cure as of yet. So, excuse me. <laughs> Um, yeah, it has so many symptoms and it affects my daily life regularly and um, it affects greatly my education and everything else, my relationship with my family. I don't get to see them very often, um, I don't get to um, like run around with my friends I don't get to like, soak up the sun I don't get to even experience the rain I love the rain it's, it's rainy season now and I love the rain I've always always loved the rain um, but I can't I can't do that either I can't go out there and just yeah I can't do that either so there's that I didn't really mention in the previous one that I could not this is the fifth semester. The fifth semester will start from the tenth of July. If I can get this video up before tenth of July, say congratulations to me. <laughs> I would try, of course, and at least get two videos done before tenth of July. Mm, but yeah, who knows? Um, um, the, what was I saying? Yeah, the fifth semester is going to start from 10th of July and I won't be attending. Um, yeah, the first two weeks are going to be online. So by some miracle, I will be able to attend the first two weeks. Um, the reason that I won't be attending is because I got diagnosed with like six different things and was hospitalized from 26th of May this year to 5th of June this year and at that time I, my exams were still going on and yeah I could not give any of the exams of the fourth semester so that's like five exams of the fourth semester and yes, I was very, very stressed about that when I was in the hospital. Um, but as I got home and they gave me another dose of antibiotics to start after I reached home, and those made me even weaker. And I could not even give the rest of the exams because I was very, very sick. And that's it. I still am tired and my mother will most definitely say that I still am sick. Um, I will take her word for it and she has talked with the um, HOD and she kindly said that you know whenever I feel well I can be back in the university and I will have to give the exams of course with um, after the fifth semester exams, which is fine. That is the least of my concerns mm -hmm. that I could not give my exams. Um, for everyone else, might be that is 
the best of their concerns, that is the least of my concerns. My first concern is that I'm alive, if I'm alive or not. So there's that, <laughs> if anyone was wondering about it. My outlook on life has changed over this past month. So today is 27th of June when I'm filming this video. So it's been a month since the first day I got admitted to the hospital. Um, yeah, that's going to be another video I feel like because yeah, 11 days of staying in the hospital is something of an experience in itself and whatever I was diagnosed with, um, I don't want to say in this video, but systemic sclerosis on top of it and it not being, you know, a very well known disorder, it made the doctors work even harder and everything else. Um, so I feel like, yeah, but I think that I've made some new friends through the hospital and um, I think that because of me, you know, they know about this disorder with someone, you know, and I think that there is not many cases in India of systemic sclerosis and I am one of them. I've never met someone with it. Women are more likely to have this and women over 30 are most likely to have it, but I have it very, very young. So I highly doubt that I would find someone my age with this disorder when it is very, very rare. So yes, if you guys want to know more about this disorder, I will get my whiteboard out from 11th standard and I will just I used to do integrations and derivatives of mathematics in that board, uh, so now I will use it to describe systemic sclerosis to you guys if, if you are even slightly interested about what it is. And I don't want you guys to Google about it, only because I think that it will scare people away. It, it will scare people away, it scared my family away, it scared me. So. I'd don't want you guys to google it no stop stop before you start don't do it disclaimer don't do it so that's that <laughs> sixth question booktube maybe <laughs> yeah um sixth question um as i mentioned that i love books I've always loved books. Um, fiction is a type of book that I'm the most interested in right now. Um, I've always been interested in the books that I was assigned to read from my school, from my college. Um, I'm interested about that, of course, always. I would find new materials about them. Excuse me about them on the internet and read about them and whatnot. Um, but I'm also very, very interested about fiction and um, I think my love for books and stories come from, comes from my mother and grandmother. My mother used to tell me this like unrealistic made up bedtime stories both from books and her own mind and my grandmother um, from my father's side of the family with whom I grew up with um, she used to tell me stories about her childhood in Bangladesh and how she grew up there and how they moved from Bangladesh to here before independence and I think that independence of India so I think that that's you know how my grandfather 
um, but, um, this business that my father and my father and my uncle are still doing that business. So I think that that story really inspires me that what they did for our family and you know they still are just continuing that business. It's really really awesome. Um, but it has its struggles. It had its struggles from the beginning, and we are from a middle class family, and we don't have um, you know a lot of money to say. Uh, but yeah, that's that's that. And I think my love for stories came from that, and the books that my mother used to you know, tell the stories from, those bedtime stories from. Those were in Bengali, if you did not know, my, I am Bengali and my mother tongue is also Bengali and English is my second language and the reason I'm making this video in English and I hope to continue making videos in English is because um, I want these videos to reach a huger number of audience than just Bengali people. Um, I would love if Bengali people who knows English to watch my videos. I would love that and I would understand if they also say that if they say that I should make videos in Bengali but please 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 understand that I I'm really excited about this and I want to share it with as many people as possible and that's why English and I love English also. I, I find the Bengali literature to be more difficult than English literature. I know that by English literature I don't mean English or British literature, I mean like literature written in English and translated from other literature to English literature not English literature to English language um, so there's that and the book that I'm currently reading is Hamlet um, by Maggie O'Farrell this was a woman's prize for fiction Award this won the Women's Prize for Fiction Award in 2020. So this is three years old. Um, no, when did she write it? Won it in 2020. So maybe she wrote it in 2020 as well. Probably. I don't know when she wrote it, but yeah. I still am you know, at the end of it. It's not Hamlet by William Shakespeare. It's not. I tried to read Hamlet by William Shakespeare before I read Hamlet, but I, I'm still not finished with this book. I'm at 284. So I'm still not finished with this book, but I'm really, really enjoying it. And it's really, really good. And I think you should read it if you haven't read it yet. And please recommend books if you love books, both in Bengali and English. I would love to read more books, but I probably wouldn't buy them before I read my unread books that I already have. But feel free to just recommend them anyway, so when I you know, save some money, and buy them, I will buy them and read them and share my reviews with you guys. I would love to do that and hope so. So there's that. Seventh question, future plans in life. What are my future plans in life? Um, my future plans? <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, I do not think that this, yeah, this would be a tough question when I wrote it down, but it is a tough question. 
like, uh, I don't know. Um, yes. What should I say about it? Um, there's gonna be like five minutes of me being um, graduate next year. <laughs> Let's start with that. <laughs> yes, I don't even know if I will be able to graduate next year. Um, I will be thankful if I'm alive tomorrow. It is as simple as that. That um, I will be forever grateful if I'm alive tomorrow. And that's unhealthy. You know, as healthy as I can be obviously and whatever it takes for me to be healthy and and it needs to be that I stay home as much as possible so that I don't disturb my inner systems, lungs, heart, kidneys and whatever else not yeah, I, I think yeah I do have a doctor's appointment on Saturday and she kindly said that I don't have to be there because last time I couldn't go to her appointment. Um, this is the rheumatologist uh, who I was talking about in this video before. So she kindly said that I don't have to go to this appointment either if I am not feeling well. It's not that I'm not feeling well, it's that I will not feel well after the appointment because it's two and a half hours from here and I have to be back two and a half hours and I have to climb up like three flights of stairs to be in this apartment so it's not worth it and I'm not going out as long as I feel like I won't be able to climb three floors of stairs to reach here I won't be going that's a good indication that if you are not able to climb three flights of stairs, you shouldn't even go out in the first place. And when you are, you know, monitored, you know, your blood sugar levels, your, yeah, blood sugar levels and oximeter, I have oximeter right there. And yeah, it, it checks the pulses and the, oxygen level and whatnot and the thermometer there she used it on me my mother she used it on me yesterday to check my temperature and I was like yeah it's fine it's 98 degrees and I was like yes of course but do you yes but it's necessary once in a while and I will do blood tests on Thursday today's Tuesday um, and she will come home and if you guys want to see her you will see her a lot in my future videos if you yeah the person who takes my blood and yeah i think she's good at taking blood so she that's good um yeah people who are good at their job i respect them more than anything and she's like yeah she's really good and she cares about me so that's nice too um, of course, it's always nice when people care about me. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, I'm speaking for too long and I'm thirsty. <laughs> That's good because that brings us to the last question is future of YouTube. <laughs> <clears throat> I meant what are my future plans and what are going to be the future videos like are they going to be like me sitting here talking nonsense for however long this video is half an hour an hour yes um no not all videos are going to be like this um i just want to show you guys what it's like to be locked up for um you know however long i would be home 
and not go out as I would feel my stupidity and institute levels are were still like miles high um not miles high but if below 35 is normal my precipitation level was like 150 160 or something like that so it's very very high so those needs to go down before anything else um yes and my med medications are being stopped for like a month more than a month because of that and because of my because of my illness for which i was hospitalized and yes <laughs> it's complicated and um if you guys want to know about systemic sclerosis and uh, my hospital experiences and as i mentioned earlier i have always struggled with health issues in my life so if you guys want to know those and i have extremely good stories about my childhood till now so I would love to share those with you guys as well. Um, as per uh, schedule of the videos, I I haven't still learned how to edit this video. After I finish this video, I will probably take a rest today. It's 7.26 right now, so I probably wouldn't do anything else. I'm hungry. So I'll eat something after this um, and I'll just take rest and probably read some more of it and watch YouTube. Yes, um, <laughs> my typical life involves like 50% of watching YouTube. <laughs> That's pathetic, but yes, um, sorry. Um, I would love to make like good, good, unique. I cannot stress the point unique enough because I feel like my life is unique, more unique than those of others. And I'm fascinated by people's lives on the internet um, ever so often. So I feel like it would be a change for those people to see a person with chronic autoimmune rare disorder which does not have any fix or medicines or cure till now how do they live and how do they cope with everything and that you know makes their life more difficult than others and i think that it would be you know helpful to, for people to know and know more about anything in general and yes my future plans for youtube are these and if you guys want to learn more about um system experiences and things like that i would love to share those but it would be a long video if i do those videos so I'm not sure if people are going to watch me talk for 30 minutes or an hour straight. I will try to cut it down to 30 minutes, not more than that, always, but um, yes, um, I'm speechless that I just finished making my first video. I don't even know if I pushed the record button. But um, I will continue this because I'm at the end of the video. So if I have not put the record button past the birthday, just um, take a rest today. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching till the end of my extremely boring speech and video and i really really thank even one person if you are watching yes i'm talking to you if you're watching this i'm really really thankful that you clicked on this video and want to 
watch it and I'm thankful and please 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 consider liking and subscribing to my channel and um, just thank you so much for watching this video till the end and I hope you have an amazing day or night or any part of your day and um, hope you have a wonderful life ahead as well and yeah I don't want to say goodbye but I have to say goodbye um, but I will see you guys very very soon in the next video and um, hopefully I will post once a week if not more then once a week um, I will not put pressure on myself and say once a week not more than once a week but if I am able to I will definitely post more and if you guys love my videos I will definitely post more because I love this aspect of YouTube and what it does to people and um, if you hear a dog barking I'm sorry is our neighbor's dog and I'm yeah anyways I think you heard traffic also because this is like just past the main road so yeah anyways yeah give this video a thumbs up if you liked it would mean really really a lot to me and please subscribe and share this with anyone who would be interested in a boring life update of the first video of a person so just yeah thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one bye goodbye okay i would say not goodbye i say this to my mother so i'll say this to you guys as well but with a twist okay goodbye